house this morning. I'm right along with Brother Paul. Man, we had a time here Friday night. Just a few of us here. Those that wanted to be here were here, and those that wanted to be blessed got blessed. And I'm telling you, we had a time. It was, we brought an outpouring of the Holy Ghost. And when, when God shows up and people are ready to praise and worship Him, like I said, Friday night, I said, anything can, anything's possible. And, and there was some live touch Christian just tore me up Friday night. Came up here just uh, just whining and crying out to God. And the Lord touched him. He, he wanted to touch and he got exactly what he came for. Such a blessing, such a blessing. If we could stand one more time, turn to the book of Matthew. Very familiar scripture. Matthew, the sixth chapter. I'm going to read 19 through the 21st verse. Matthew 6, 19 through 21. Lay not up your treasures, lay not up yourselves treasures upon earth, where moth and rust doth corrupt, and where thieves break through and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt, and where thieves do not break through nor steal. For where your heart is, there will your heart be also. I want to read 21 again. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. If we could all go before the Lord and say a message here, say a prayer. Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for letting us be here, God. Pray that you have your way, God. Open our ears, open our eyes tonight, God. Bless us, Lord Jesus. Strengthen us, God. Be with us, Lord Jesus. Help me to receive what, what I'm preaching tonight, God. Help me to receive it. Help me to deliver it, God. Help me to give it the way you want me to give it, God. Hallelujah, Lord. We thank you for everyone here, Lord. Bless them, Lord God. Bless them, Lord. Feed your sheep, Lord. Feed your sheep. In the wonderful name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. You may be seated. Amen. I'm going to, 
I'm going to preach this morning. <laughs> Amen. I'm going to preach. God's, God's got a way of uh, getting a hold of somebody. He does. Um, he'll, he'll move every object out of your way, put things in your way to block you from doing what you want to do in order to get your attention for what he wants you to do. Amen, understand that? Amen, he'll put, he'll put stuff in your way so you cannot do what you want to do in order to get you to do what he wants you to do. Amen. I, I serve a wonderful God. I'm, I'm so thankful for his many blessings and the way he keeps his hand on me and, and my family and the church. And there's no church like our church. Amen. I'm, gonna, I'm just going to say it like that. There's no church like our church. I love this church. Um, I've been to other churches and visit churches, but I'm telling you, this is my home church. And I love this church. I love my family here. Amen. This is my family, just like our sister said, Sister Dolores, this is my family. Amen. I'm going to get into this treasure. Treasure. Anybody ever thought of the old treasure stories? Treasure Island and the Oak, uh, what is it, the Curse of Oak Island and all that? Where treasure hunting. You know, when I was a kid, I used to love to read about going on treasure hunts and stuff like that, right? Amen. Treasure is a quantity of precious metals, gems, or other valuable objects a very valuable object, or it could also be a person valued for the assistance in which they give. That person's a treasure to me. My mom is a treasure to me. She raised me on a church pew, and she still lives the, the, the truth, and she's a treasure to me. Amen? My children are a treasure to me. My wife is a treasure to me. My pastor is a treasure to me. His wife, Sister Howard, is a treasure to me. My church family, you're a treasure to me. I hold each one of you dear to me. You're a treasure to me. Something I hold, or somebody else might not see the value in you or the love that I have for you. But I do, and the Lord does. He sees that treasure that I value so much about you, and He treasures that for you also. Amen. Something that is held on to very, very carefully is a treasure. Amen. I've got certain things at my house, you know, that I hold as, a, you know, something that I cherish. Something, you know, I worked hard for and I, and I got to get. So, you know, my, my grill, <laughs> I like to cook on the grill. It's a treasure to me. Amen. My kids bought me one of those uh, stone grills for my birthday this year. And I, it's a treasure to me. I love cooking on that thing. I like it. I enjoy it. My lawnmower, it's a piece of junk to some people. Man, it's a treasure to me. It starts every time I pull the cord. And I get to mow my lawn with it. It's a treasure to me. Amen. Some things that I hold as a treasure might not think, you might not think it's a very, why in the world are you holding on to that for? But then there's some things that you look at as a treasure, and I'm like, what in the world are you holding on to that for? <laughs> Amen. We all hold things differently, and we all look at people differently, and we all hold things differently. Amen. My wife and I, we love to go garage sailing and we like to go to auctions. Amen. Anybody else? We're looking for that great deal, looking for that something that somebody bought 20, 30, 10 years ago. And all of a sudden, you know, when they got it home, they thought it was the best thing on the market. You know, they bought it brand new at the store, had it, and when, when family or friends would come over, they'd get it out. They're so excited to show this thing to somebody. And they'd be, look at this. We got this. They'd show them how it worked. They'd show them what they could do with it and how pretty it was and how polished up it was. And they, they, they just, friends or family come over, they get it out every time. Amen? They're excited about it. But then after a few years, they put it in the yard sale pile. Amen? We got a yard sale pile. Amen? And somebody else is going to get that for a lot cheaper price than what you paid for it. Amen. Two or three dollars now. Where you paid 80 to 90 to 150 bucks on this thing 20 years ago, all of a sudden somebody's going to get it for five bucks. True. And then they're going to take it home. And when their friends and family come over, look, I got this for five bucks. Look at this. And then they're going to show it off. And they're going to polish it up. And they're going to be excited about it and show them how it works. Show them what it does and show them how they can use it. Amen. 
So you saw this in a store, brand new, and woo, when this nice thing is nice. I think you look so good in my house when I get it home. Amen. That's the way we get excited when we get something new. And um, spend a lot of money on it, and a few years later, like I said, it's, they're going to let it go for a few dollars. Amen. When they brought this home, they're so excited about it. Most likely they bought this thing new. And like I said, after a while, it just got old to them, right? Now I'm going to talk to you about the spiritual realm. When God looked down one day and he saw you, and I mean, you might not have been in a miserable state. Some of us have never, never left the church. Some of us grew up in this church and have never walked out, never quit, never, never hit a bump, so to speak. They never quit church. But some of us left church. Amen? Some of us tried something else. Somebody tried, you know, some of us have, have, uh, are trying different things and have tried other things to satisfy your soul. Amen? But we all know there's one thing that can truly satisfy your soul. That empty spot inside of your heart, that empty spot that's inside of your soul, there's only one thing that can fill that hole, and that's the Lord Jesus Christ Himself. The Comforter, the Holy Ghost, Jesus Christ, walking and living in your heart. Amen. Looking for some peace of mind, looking for a little joy, looking for something to get away from the life that I was living. Amen. I was, I was looking for something different at one time and because I had no direction, but we were looking for something. Me and my wife were looking for something. Amen. I want to ask you today, you know, I want to repeat that last line, the 21st verse. It says, for where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Okay? What is your treasure? What is your treasure? I want you to think of that in your own mind. What is your treasure? Where is your heart at? Where is your heart at? What is important and sacred to you? What's, what's the top of your list? Amen. God chooses people to serve Him. Amen. People, people can, can, can walk into this church house and sit down but I'm telling you, and I'm not being harsh here, but if God has not chose them, am I right? If God has not chose them, they'll just sit there. I'm, I'm talking Bible here. This is in the Bible. God chooses people. God chooses people. John 15, 16. Let me read it to you. John 15 and 16. Ye have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and ordained you that you should go and bring forth fruit. Amen? So there's people that come to church because they feel good coming to church, but they've never been called to come to church. You're getting quiet on me. Amen? Help me preach this morning. Amen? There's people that just come to church because it, it does make them feel better. Amen? But they're not chosen. God did not... Pull them out and say, hey, I want you, I, I, I got to work for you yet. And you might sit here for a couple years, and then God's going to be like, okay. And he's going to call you. Amen. This is Bible. This is Bible. First Peter. Let me go to First Peter here. First Peter, second chapter, ninth verse. But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and holy nation, a peculiar people that should... Show forth the praises of him who hath called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Amen. Anybody feel peculiar here today? Amen. We should feel peculiar. You should look peculiar. You should act peculiar. Amen. We should. God can look down and choose anybody to serve him. God can look down at any time, at any place, and at any time and change anybody's life. Anybody's life. I don't care who they are. That's the type of power I'm talking about that our God has. He can take somebody that everybody else has kicked to the curb and say, that guy is worthless. All God's got to do is brush his hand that guy's way, turn his life around, and people are going to go, wow, woo, look what God did for that guy. Amen. I know some guys like that. My brother's one of them. 
That guy was in a miserable state. And I prayed for him for years. And then one day, he walked through them, these church doors and came to an old-fashioned altar of repentance. I was one of those guys who lived a reckless life. And then at the age of 37 years old, I walked through the church house doors. Amen. And God touched my life and completely turned me around, made me a preacher. I wasn't expecting to be a preacher. Amen. It's amazing what God can do for somebody. Amen. He could have chosen anybody the day he chose you. Brother Tommy's another one. He could have chosen anybody that day. Brother Lon, anybody could be sitting in your seat. Andy, anybody could be sitting in your seat. Brother Rick, Brother Mark, anybody could be sitting there in your seat receiving what God's given us. Amen. He can reach down and it's, you know, I don't understand how he chooses people or how he calls people. He does. He does. And when he calls you, I believe he's got to work for you. I believe he's got something for you to do in the church house and outside the church house. He does. Amen. You came to an old-fashioned altar of repentance. You went down in the water in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins. And what happened? Something supernatural happened. Something you came up spot-free, sin-free. Sin-free for the first time in your life. Spotless, without wrinkle. You came up a peculiar person. A changed person. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things are new. All things are new. Amen. You look at things different when you come up out of that water. Amen. You dress different. You act different. You're kinder. You're more loving. Because something supernatural happened to you in that water. Amen. If you're not kind to people and you don't act kind and you don't show love, go back in the water again. Amen. Get rebaptized. Amen. Something didn't happen to you in the water the way it happened to me and, and, and the family of God. Amen. I told you I was going to preach this morning. Back me up. Somebody support me this morning. Amen. Sin free and spotless. I'm talking to everybody in the church house. I'm, not, I'm just not, I'm talking to me if nobody else wants to listen to me. I'm talking to me. I mean, this message, when I, when I started writing stuff down, I'm like, man, you're beating me to death, Lord. Amen. But that, that's what I, if he's got to do this to get my attention, let's do it, Lord. I want to be saved. I want to make heaven my home. This world is not my home. Amen. If you've been coming to church here 20 years, 10 years, 5 years, 40 years, I'm talking to you this morning. Amen. Please leave it to me. You received the Holy Ghost, and wow, what a great gift. Amen. Just like that thing we purchased in the store. Okay? What a deal. Free. God, the maker of the world, gave you a free gift, the Holy Ghost, which is Jesus Christ walking with you, the comforter, a comforter. I will send a comforter. God will send a comforter in my name. Amen. Amen. I want you to, I, I don't know if, if you understand this or not, but I, when I was studying this, man, Old Testament, Moses and Noah, David, Daniel, the, the three Hebrew children did not have the Holy Ghost with them. They did not have Jesus Christ or get, you know, in their heart the way we got that. They learned the stories and they love the stories. That's how they lived it. We've got a blessing to have Jesus Christ with us in our heart every day, everywhere we go, every decision we make, every time we have a problem, we have a comforter that's going to be with us and comfort us through our hardships. Job. Think of Job sitting there scraping his boils and stuff in a complete state of depression. And his wife said, curse God and die, Job. He didn't have the Holy Ghost, but he said, woman, you speak like a foolish child. 
My God is still good to me. I don't care if I've lost everything. My God still is good to me. There's no Holy Ghost. And they went through the things they went through. We've got to comfort her. Woo! We've got the comforter. We've got the comforter. Amen. We should be excited about that. Amen. A new gift that God just gave us. So what happens? Lon, what happens? Boy, I, I wanted to go to work and I wanted to tell everybody about this gift. I wanted to tell everybody about my friends and family come over. I wanted to share this with them. What God did to me. How this Holy Ghost works. How the Comforter goes with me everywhere I go. Everywhere I go, I want to sing a song about my Savior. Everywhere I want to go, I want to whistle a happy tune about my Savior because He changed my life. Amen. He changed my life. He turned me around and let me come into this marvelous life. What an opportunity for Mike Andrews to be able to change his life and walk in this marvelous light instead of the darkness I was in. Amen. Amen. Woo, hallelujah. When we would sing songs, when you would sing songs when you first got this thing, when you first got the Holy Ghost, you were so excited. Boy, we'd lift our hands as we sang songs. We'd lift our hands and glorify God, and we sung with some passion. We'd stand up and we'd testify with passion. Amen. Let God know how good he was to us and how much we appreciated him, how much we loved him. Boy, that, that fire was just burning in us. Amen. But after time, after time, we we're not so excited about the, this great gift. I mean, this marvelous gift that God gave us. After a while, it just kind of gets set back on another shelf again with some of the junk that we tried before, alcohol and the drugs and, and, and women and, and filth and everything else. We set Jesus Christ up on a shelf beside that stuff. Amen. Amen. We do. We put him on a back burner sometimes, so many times, and he's standing there waving his hands and saying, I'm right here. I'm right here, Brother Mike. I'm right here. Call on me. Let me help you. Amen. Everywhere you go, you would tell your friends. Some, somebody would invite you over and go, hey, you want a beer? No, I can't, I can't have a beer no more. I don't drink no more. I quit. I got a new wine. I'm drinking from a fountain that never runs dry, and it's free. It don't cost me a dime, and I'm, 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 I tell you what, I can get drunker than you can. <laughs> Woo! Come watch me dance sometime. Amen. Come watch me get happy. Come over to my house. <laughs> Come on over here and see what the good Lord has done for me. Amen. Amen. Man of God, woman of God, guard your hearts and protect your borders. I'm warning you, protect them. Amen. It, it don't take too long in life, in walking with God. It don't take too long before you realize Everybody that I call brother and sister or friend does not care for me or love for me the way that I care and love for them. Amen. Amen, I'm preaching. Amen, I'm preaching this morning. Not everybody that I've called brother or I've called friend care for me or love me the way that I care or love for them. And boy, does it hurt when you find that out. Yes, it hurts. That's why the comforter's with me. He was betrayed. He knows exactly what we go through when somebody talks about us or hurts us or tells you you're no good or whatever, you know. He knows exactly when somebody kisses you on the cheek and says that's him. He knows exactly what it feels like to be betrayed. Amen. It doesn't take long. Amen. Whew. I'm getting excited here. I'm throwing pages everywhere up here. Amen. Not everybody's going to be excited for the change in your life. Amen. Amen. You go to work all happy and everything, and they go, what in the world's the Holy Ghost? What are you talking about? You've never heard of Jesus Christ living in your heart? 
Oh, yeah, I've, I've asked him into my heart. <laughs> okay, mm, you don't have the Holy Ghost. <laughs> I'm just going to tell you a plain fact out. You don't have the Holy Ghost. If, if you ask Jesus in as your personal Savior, you don't have the Holy Ghost. Amen. You don't. Amen. The ones that came in here and were on fire are not as enthused as they once were. Amen. The singers, um, when we get up and sing, we, you know, sometimes we don't, as we once did. We don't glorify God. We don't raise our hands. We don't praise and worship the way we once did when we first got the Holy Ghost. We were not as excited, and we don't sing with the same passion that we once did. We're, and and you, can, you, can, you can watch. You can watch as, as, some, you know, as different ones come up and sing. If, if you've got the enthusiasm of that, boy, people feel it. People feel it, and people get behind it, and people get on fire with you. Amen. Jesus Christ is not your treasure anymore, like I mentioned. We have set him up beside the drugs, besides the alcohol, besides the women, besides the filth, and besides the junk in our yard sale pile. Let's put it like that. We put him in our yard sale pile. Amen. You, and you sit back now, you don't get as involved in services as you once did. Amen. Think, I'm, I'm, hey, let's open our spiritual ears this morning. Amen. I believe time is winding up here. If you look at the world, you look at the world news and you look at things going on, hey, our country just completely loaded the Taliban with every single weapon and everything. They, I mean, completely let them have everything they needed to occupy them for war. Our country did that. Something is going on and we're holding a blinded eye to it like nothing's happening. The end of the world is coming, people. Jesus Christ is getting ready to open up them clouds and step through and call his children home. And those that have a blinded eye to it are going to still be sitting there saying, what in the world's going on? We've been told about this since I was a little boy. I never thought I'd be living it in my lifetime. I never did. But I'm going to be honest with you. The end of the world is coming, my friend. And we better be ready. We better be ready at any cost. Amen. Something happens when you've got the greatest nation in the world. The great man, we've got so many, so much freedom and, and happiness and things that we can do, like this right here. They can't do that. And now they won't be able to do that because we've occupied them and loaded their army down to where nobody will be able to do anything over there. They're going to set their own government up over there in Afghanistan. Hallelujah. We sit back now. We don't come to church as often as we used to. Amen. When I started coming to church here 17 years ago, Friday nights was the service to be at. Still is. But only 15 or 20 of us are here. Amen. Friday nights used to be, and, and I'm, I'm telling you, what happened? What happened? What, what in the world is your treasure on Friday night that you can't be in church? Amen. I'm preaching this morning. Did I tell you that? Brother Mike is going to preach this morning. God gave me something to give to you this morning. Amen. God gave me something to talk to me about. I'm not here every Friday night. Where's my treasure at on that Friday night that I'm not here? Amen. I'm not just preaching to you. I'm preaching to us. Amen. I want us to make heaven. I don't want nobody left behind. Amen. But what's got us so occupied that keeps us away from God's house, the church of Jesus Christ? Amen. What has got us so busy and so occupied? That's where my treasure's at on Friday nights now. I'm not, I don't have to go to church. I'm, I'm comfortable. I'm relaxed. I'm good. I'm saved already? Let me explain something to you. You might be changed, my friend, but you're not saved. Nobody is saved until they walk through the gates of heaven. 
Nobody's saved until they walk through the gates of heaven. Then you can shout rejoice all you want to up there and say, I've been saved. Down here we shout rejoice and say, I've been changed. I have. I've been changed. Amen. He might have saved me from this world, but he hasn't saved me from this world yet. He hasn't taken me out of this world yet. I have been changed. Hallelujah. We can always find excuses why we're not here on Friday nights or or some Sundays we miss. Amen. The services last too long. Amen. Preachers long-winded. Ooh, that, this, this, this preacher. Amen. Too many hypocrites are in the church. Amen. I've heard that one forever. Too many hypocrites in the church. They never sing the songs that I like. Nobody shakes my hand. The young people are too loud and too distracting. Look around. Seriously, I want you to look around. Yeah, look around. And I'm, I'm, I'm going to be honest with you here. Tony and Wes were two of the first ones of me and Jimmy youth pastored with. And they are the only two out of a group of like 45 youth that we had that still come to church. That's sad. And then... Right, but he wasn't with the originals. He, Isaac and Brew. Oh, I'm going to. You're going to be give me some time. I'm preaching. I'm preaching this morning. Amen. I'm preaching. I'm pre- you preach to Terry when you get home. Amen. <laughs> Amen. But what happens? What happens? How do we treat the youth group when they're growing up? How do we treat the young ones when they get a little wild in church? And then I'm going to tell you a story here. My very first year here, back in 2000, what was that? Six, 2006, I believe. I had a young boy. We did that. That's when we did the uh, uh, church camp in the summertime for the little kids. Remember that? We used to do those. Yeah, the Bible Bible school. That's it. And I was the leader. They asked me if I wanted to help and be a leader. And then I had a, a helper, and it was. It was one of Sister Dolores' grandsons. And they had balloons, and they were popping the balloons, you know, hitting them in the air. And this young boy, he was, I think he was 13 or 14 at the time, stepped out into the hallway. And I was, I was sitting in, and he was on the outside of the pew, like where Sean's at. That's about where we were sitting at. He was on the outside. I was on the inside. He wanted to sit on the outside. But he stepped out in the aisle and, and hit the balloon, and they yelled at him. I mean, they embarrassed that poor boy to death. To get back, get back in that pew. This is for children's Bible school. Yelled at that kid and said, get back in your pew. And I was like, what in the world? And I didn't see anything wrong with it. He was just hitting the balloon like everybody else was doing. And he put his head down and he started crying. And he said, that's why I'm not going to come to church here when I get older. He goes, they, they treat me like crap here. That's what he said. And he has not, since he's been out of the youth, I might have seen him twice. And I believe he's like... Uh, he was one of the originals. Yeah. How do we treat the youth? Are we kind to them? Do we encourage them when they get up and sing? When they have something they feel like they want to do for the Lord? If they're playing the guitar, if they're wanting to play the piano, if they're on the drums, do we encourage them? Do we say, hey, you're doing a great job? Or we're like, hey, come on. Whoa. Put a volume knob on them and, and hurt their feelings all the time. How long would you stick around if somebody kept kicking you? Amen? Amen. It's true. This is the truth. Amen. Your standards are too strict. There's too much sacrifice in your church. Are you serious? That's, that's one that gets me every time. It's because if, if, if my pastor preached that I had to wear a sweater every day, I'd wear a sweater every day. Because that's my man of God. That's my Moses. That's my Noah. That's my man of God. That's my pastor. He's the one that I'm I'm putting my, I know the Bible says don't put your faith in man because you're going to fail. But this isn't a man, this is my pastor. This is my pastor. You can look at it different if you want to, but I believe in obeying your pastor. 
Because any time anybody in the Bible went up against their, the man of God in the Bible, things didn't turn out very well for them. Read it. Go up against the man of God if you want to. But I've read the stories of old. I'm going to back my pastor. I'm going to support my pastor. Amen. I am. We have too many. The church is allowed to have standards. Let me put it like that. We're allowed to draw a line and say, hey, that's not holy. That's not godly. That's against the church standard. We're allowed to do that. That's a church house. This is godly. If you want to live like the world, go out and live in the world. This is a holy place. This is a place you come to. We don't come here dressed like we're going to Walmart. We're coming to see the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, the man who created the world and, and he's going to end the world. That's who we're coming to see. Amen. The church has every right to draw a line and say, don't go past that. Don't go past that. Amen. This is, this is a righteous place. This is a holy place. Amen. There are, there are too many people today that, that go to church and, and we're just relaxed. We're comfortable at the way we're living. Amen. We are. We're comfortable. We're relaxed. And they have, they, like they've already got it made. I mentioned that earlier. And you're comfortable, you're relaxed, and your guard is down. Your guard's down when you're relaxed. I would rather sacrifice my life here on earth and give up a few things for a little while. Because what's my life? The Bible says my life is just a vapor. I'm here for a short time and then I'm gone. It's a short lifespan we live here on earth. Sometimes it seems like it's forever. You know, 57 didn't take very long. 57 didn't take very long. 85 didn't take very long. Amen. He, when I look at myself, I don't think I'm 57 years old. I'm 57. And it went like that. It went like that. Amen. I would rather make a sacrifice down here and make heaven my home than to get relaxed and comfortable and miss heaven over some goofy, silly little reason that you want to say my standard is too hard for you or our sacrifices are too hard for you. Ten seconds in hell and you're going to realize I made the wrong decision. Giggle, laugh, whatever you want to do in your own mind. But this is real, people. This is real. This is real. Amen. John 14 and 26. John 14, 26. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance, whatsoever I have said unto you. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name. Amen. He shall teach you all things. Amen. That's what I'm talking about, is the Comforter. He's going to teach you all things. If we listen, if we listen to that, that voice, and you'll know the voice of the Holy Ghost when he's talking to you, because he will not misdirect you. He will not lead you wrong, down the wrong path. He will not lead you in the wrong direction. The Holy Ghost will always, always choose the right way. Always. Amen. Jesus is with you everywhere. Everywhere you go, he shall teach you all things. If we listen to his voice, stay away from that. Don't go over there. Stay away from them people. Don't go to that church. Hey, those people are wrong. That's the Holy Ghost talking to you. Amen. There are times you're going to need this comforter, this treasure that is so valued to me. Amen. There's going to be times in your life where you Nobody else is around, nobody else. You can't get a hold of nobody else, and you need some comfort. Amen. Bills are still going to keep coming. Amen. Hardships are still going to keep coming. Loved ones. We're going to lose loved ones. 
That's why we have a comforter. That's why we have a comforter. A comforter is going to mention things to you in your lowest part of your life, and he's going to whisper things in your ear if you listen and not get angry at him. He's going to give you more than I could ever explain to you. The comfort of the Holy Ghost, Jesus Christ, with you. Whispering in your ear in a time that you really need some, some answers. That's the comforter. Amen. Amen. You are not, we are not wrapped up in bubble wrap just because we got the Holy Ghost. Because we went down in the water. We're not wrapped up in bubble wrap. Amen. The Bible tells me it's going to rain on the just as well as the unjust. Amen. You're going to get sick, they're going to get sick. Sometimes it seems like, man, why are they doing so much better than us? Why do they have so much? And why do we suffer so much, it seems like? Amen. Am I right? Sometimes you look at cars, people driving, the houses they live in, like, what in the world? But man, if you could look just a few years ahead at the house you're going to have, the mansion you're going to have. Amen. The place you're going to be living, the city that he's gone to prepare for us. Man, this world is not our home. Man, this is nothing compared to what he's got laid up for us. Our treasure is laid up in heaven. Amen. Hallelujah. Do you know why God gave us the Holy Ghost? I'm sure most of us do. Because he knew in your life that there's going to be misery. There's going to be heartache. There's going to be pain. There's going to be sorrow. There's going to be disappointment. The Holy Ghost wasn't given to you to have power over the devil. It was given to you to have power over the devil, but not, that's not the only reason. Okay? That's not the only reason the Holy Ghost was given to you. It was not given to you just to have spiritual joys and spiritual blessings. The real purpose of the Holy Ghost is to be a comforter to you. For Him to wrap His arms around you or, 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 or to comfort you in the time of need. When you're really, really needing somebody to talk to, He's the one to go to, the comforter. Amen. More than anything else that you're ever going to want or ever going to need, you are going to need a comforter in your life at one point or another while you're walking down this road. Amen. You're going to need some, something to encourage you, and you're going to need someone to pick you up when you're feeling low. Amen. When you're lonely, the comforter is going to be there. When you're having a bad day at work, Brother Juan, when we have a bad day at work, the comforter is going to be there. Amen. Brother Paul, Brother Tommy, amen. When we have a bad day at work, the comforter. Lord, why is this? What's going on, Lord? You ask him, talk to him. What's happening? What's going on? Help me today. God, why is what's wrong with everybody? Come on, help me, Lord. And man, I'm telling you, it works. It works. There is no easy way to heaven. I'm going to flat out tell you that. Any other way given besides salvation, you're, you're, you're the same as a thief and a robber, the Bible says. If you try to get into heaven some other way, the same as a thief and a robber. There's no easy way to heaven. And I'm going to flat out, I'm just going to, there is nothing wrong with the old time way. Jesus Christ gave us this salvation. Jesus Christ gave us the water to be baptized in. The Bible says it's a simple salvation. Repent, be baptized, receive the Holy Ghost. If it ain't broke, don't try to fix it. Don't try to bring something new into a church house and say, hey, we've got a new way to praise God. we got a new salvation. No, you don't. It's written in Acts 2.38. It was written long before you got here. It'll be here long after you're gone. Right. Nothing wrong with the old time standards and the old time way. Nothing wrong with it at all. Amen. Hallelujah. That's for free. 
If it's not broke, don't fix it. So, you know, we, we all have heard that. Nothing is broke with my Holy Ghost. Nothing is wrong with going down in the water in the name of Jesus Christ. Nothing is wrong with shedding some tears at an old-fashioned altar. Repenting of your sins. Coming up feeling better about yourself. Nothing at all wrong with that. It don't need fixed. It does not need fixed. Amen. Life, this is a life of sacrificing and living a standard separate from the world. Separate from the world. Amen. This is a life that's supposed to be pleasing to God, not pleasing to Mike. Live the lifestyle of, for Christ that I want to live. It's not what the Bible tells me. I'm supposed to be living a life pleasing to Him. Pleasing to Him. Don't get relaxed and don't get comfortable here. Like I've said before, this world is not our home. Amen. I'm not supposed to fit in here. I'm not supposed to fit into this world. They're supposed to look at me like I'm a peculiar person. When I walk into, into, the, into my church, I mean in my church, into my work area, the conversations kind of dim down a little bit and the vulgarity. Sorry, Mike, I didn't mean to say that in front of you. That's okay. You don't have what I have. <laughs> You don't have what I have. I've got my life changed. I don't, I, don't, I don't talk like that anymore. I don't need that, the stories of them, that filthy talk. I don't, I don't need that to get me through the day anymore. I've got a comforter. You can't see him, but he's right here in my heart. And he goes with me everywhere I go. Everywhere I go. That's why I live the way I'm living, because I have a comforter. I have a comforter. Amen. You know, I could go anywhere. I could walk to you. You could place me anywhere in this world to, with, a, with um, what I wear to work, you know, blue jeans and a T-shirt or, or what have you, or, or like this. You could put me anywhere in the world, and I'd fit in with, 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 a, with a group somewhere, okay? I want you to follow me here. But our women, our women, you take our women that, 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 that wear the skirts, and they have their hair, and, and they, they believe in our standards. You take that woman, you put her somewhere just here in the United States, and she's an oddball. She's a peculiar person. Something's wrong with that woman. Amen. It don't take, when I go, if I take mom to breakfast or we go to Walmart or something, people look at us. And they're not looking at me, they look at my mom. And I, I give them a glare sometimes. Like, what are you looking at, buddy? You know, it's your problem. Something you want to say about my mom? <laughs> you know? And you put my mom somewhere and she looks different. She's peculiar. Everywhere she goes, she, she, she's got a very modest look about her, a very modest apparel. Sister Howard, my, my wife, she, she, you know, a lot of the women in the church, they, they dress modest. And everywhere you go, you dress modest and you, you got that look about you because you're not trying to fit into this world. We're not supposed to try to fit into this world. I don't want to fit into this place. I don't. I don't want to, to be part of the, the world club here. I, no, I've got a heavenly club that I'm part of. I don't want to fit into this place. Amen. First Timothy, I'm going to read this. Ooh, glory. Everybody still with me here? Hallelujah. Let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise again. Glory, glory. Okay, I'm preaching this morning. 1 Timothy, 2nd chapter, ninth verse. In like manner also that women adorn themselves in modest apparel and shamefacedness and sobriety, not with broided hair or gold pearls or costly array, but which become women professing godliness with good works, good acts. Okay? Now here's the funny thing I'm going to throw at you. It does not tell a man to be modest in his apparel. Got quiet there, didn't it? Plunk. It does not tell a man to be modest in his dress. It tells a woman to be modest in her dress apparel. Kind of picking on the women, aren't they? And they were, yeah, amen. Women, all the women just, yeah, amen. Jerks, amen. Hey, let me read something, though. The verse right in front of that. I will, therefore, this is the eighth verse of the second chapter of 1 Timothy. 
The eighth verse says, I will therefore that men pray everywhere, lifting up holy hands without wrath and doubting. And then he gets into a woman's apparel. Okay? Let me read it again. I will therefore that men pray everywhere, lifting up holy hands without wrath and doubting. Have no doubt what you're lifting your hands for. Amen. Everywhere you go, you should be praising God and worshiping the Lord. Let people know the type of lifestyle you're living and take some of the embarrassment off of our women. Amen. They look peculiar everywhere you go, and the men do not. The men do not look out of place wherever we go. We don't. But men, when our women who are dressed in modest apparel show up somewhere, people turn their heads and scorn at them. Who do they think they are? And they've put up with this, Sister Howard, how long? 60 years, pretty much. Mom? 54 years, okay? This, it's not, I mean, it's not very comforting to walk into a place with a dress and modest apparel and, and, and show up somewhere and have everybody staring at you. How about a man walking to a restaurant and going, woo praise God! Hallelujah! Hey, hey, I serve Jesus Christ and I'm not ashamed of it. Think of the looks you'd get. Think of how people would look at you. I'm not ashamed of Jesus Christ. Are you ashamed of it? Yeah. See how long are you are in that restaurant? Ah, <laughs> uh, security. <laughs> we got another one. We got another one, security, please. Let's get him out of here. Amen. The men should be the righteous, the spiritual leaders of the church house. We should be the first ones standing up and worshiping God. Amen. Amen. It's Bible. We are to be the leaders of our household. Amen. If your little children see you raising your hands in the church house, your kids are going to raise their hands. And they're going to follow your direction because you're the man of the house. Amen. I will therefore that men pray everywhere, lifting up holy hands without wrath and doubting. That's Bible. That's Bible. In like manner also the women shall adorn themselves in modest apparel and shamefadeness, shamefadeness and sobriety. It's a lot more for a woman. It is. It's, it, it, it's harsh on a woman to, to show up somewhere with her, with her dressed like we're supposed to be dressing. It's hard on them. It's embarrassing. Especially today. Like, hey, 60, 70 years ago? It was, you know, there's no big deal. All the women wore dresses. But today, when, when there's a new Jesus out there, new Jesus, new salvation, you don't have to live like that anymore. You guys are a bunch of idiots. What? Says who? Who changed it? Because the last scripture in my Bible says, anybody who adds to or takes away from these words, am I right? That's what the Bible says, is in danger of hellfire. Amen. There's nothing wrong with the old time way. Nothing wrong with it. Amen. Hallelujah. Woo. It's getting hot up here. I could go anywhere and fit in in any part of the world. But you can take my mom or, or any, any woman in this church and just take them over here to Plymouth or the Walmart, dress like, we, we, like they, they dress, and they're going to feel out of place, and they should feel out of place because they're a peculiar people. They're royalty. They've got royal blood running through their veins, and they're living this for God. They're not living this for the, for the world. Amen. That's the way to look at it. I'm not living, I'm not dressing like this for you. Amen. I'm dressing like this for my Savior. I'm dressing for, like this because this is the way I believe. I believe. Not because it's my church standard, but this is what I believe. I believe this way. I believe this. Amen. Everybody loves a good deal. Amen. Everybody loves a good deal. And I'm telling you what, Jesus Christ has got a deal for you that you cannot refuse. Jesus Christ. 
For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Where is your treasure at this morning? Where is your heart at? Amen. They come back up to the music. I'm going to wrap this up. Amen. For where your treasure is, amen, there will your heart be also. Hallelujah. You should be uncomfortable here in this world. Amen. I'm, I'm not saying, you know, be on edge everywhere you go, but I'm, I'm just saying do not try to fit in with the world. Don't fit in with this place. And, and you know, I've got friends who, who I love dearly, dearly, but their eyes have not been opened spiritually the way mine eyes have been opened. Amen. When Jesus gave that message on the mount and he turned to his disciples, he said, they did not hear a thing I just said. Jesus poured his heart out, gave them, you know, a great message, and they didn't hear a thing. And he said, yeah, the, the, the disciples said, yeah, they did, Lord. He, yeah, they were right there. They were standing right in front of you. You didn't see them? He goes, yeah. They didn't hear a thing I said. For having eyes, they cannot see him. For having ears, they cannot hear. Spiritually, the spiritual realm, some people, it's just, it's sad. But Jesus Christ pointed them out. Amen. If I get everybody stand. We go through things. Marky, I'm so glad to see you here today, bud. Brother, praying for you, bud. I'm on your side. If you need me, holler at me. I'm, I'm here for you, brother. I'm here for you. And your sister, I can't imagine what you guys are going through right now. But at times like these, it is so good to have a comforter. So good to have a place you can turn to. So nice to have somebody that you can turn to. So good to have a, a family who cares about you. The world don't have this. The world does not have this. You, you can call somebody when you're, when you're out in the world. You can call somebody and, and they can't really pray for you. Am I right? But boy, you, you, you come to a church like this and you get a hold of your brother. You get a hold of a sister that loves you and cares about you and cares about what you're going through. Buddy, I, some things are going to move out of the way. Some things are going to just part. Comforter. The comforter. The comforter is going to be everywhere you go. Amen. Amen. I love the Lord. I'm so thankful for you listening to me this morning. I hope I said something that's going to bless you, something that's going to help you. I'm going to ask you, as a friend, as somebody that cares about you, I want you to come to the altar this morning. Grab somebody by the hand if you want to. Grab somebody you love, somebody that you care for, somebody that you want to make heaven your home with. Grab them by the hand this morning. Bring them down to this altar and say, let's pray. Let's pray. Time's wrapping up. Time's wrapping up. They can close this church house down again anytime they want to. With their laws and their, their make-believe stuff, they want to say that we're getting time to shut the service. They can shut it down. Amen. Let's try to make things right today. Hallelujah. God bless you. Amen.